Hello and welcome to World War One Great War Fighting Knives. Uh, today we'll be looking at the German trench knife, um, as the Germans called it the Grabendolch. Basically translated as the trench dagger. Um, we will be looking at the at two variations of a very common issue nine groove um, knife. Uh, now these were issued out a lot to the German soldiers. Um, the German soldier had a long history um, of knives uh, before the Great War, unlike a lot of countries, because uh, the Germans used them for the hunters used them, the lumberjacks used them, etc., etc. And a lot of these uh, soldiers, these German Germans, took them off to war with them. Um, so they always uh, had them on them at the beginning of the war. Um, unlike, for example, say the French army, um, who didn't um, have any um, knives issued to them um, in the first few war, uh, months of the war. And it was only reports, really, uh, given by French officers that uh, gave priority to what was... Uh, um, to the French industry, to, uh, infantry, to have uh, equipment um, here, like uh, the st uh, like standard civilian or regula uh, regulation knives, were actually given to them way after the war began, uh, because they realised, you know, <laughs> the Germans had uh, an advantage over them. Now, these knives. Um, they produce like literally uh, dozens and dozens of different manufacturers uh, produce these knives um, all of the same design basically some slightly longer some slightly thinner thicker etc etc um, but all basically come with the nine grooves etc now there's lots of knives made by certain manufacturers which I'll show you in a minute um, Hugo Collar one here for example and then there are other ones that were made, you know, you could just order them off of like a, a mail order catalogue. Um, if it was an order for the soldier himself, you know, there might be uh, friends or family would have purchased and sent them to him. Um, um, so from that catalogue. Now, you know, this is from, you know, in 1915 when this conflict became bogged down and, you know, people were sheltering and um, in deep trenches. Now, this led uh, to attacks that ended up like fast and furious, and you needed something smaller uh, for hand to hand. Um, now, obviously, they started doing raiding parties, uh, formed with both sides the Germans, the British, the French. Um, they needed particular um, equipment to do these raids. Now, you know, there's no good, you know, the, the standard stuff they had. Um, for example, you know, like uh, short bayonets and and guns, etc. They needed uh, quiet, um, you know, equipment to, to do these raids. Um, one, the, the raids were done, were needed, to, you know, to get all the prisoners for intelligence, etc. Um, or basically to destroy dugouts and strongholds. Now, <laughs> the Germans soon saw... Uh, that the regulation, the small arms that they had were cumbersome, noisy, and specific weapons were needed. Um, that's when the German general staff established new regulations whilst at the same time launching production of uh, daggers, trench knives, and even trench clubs for this uh, new type of fighting. Uh, so basically what happened uh, in uh, the order of... Uh, I think it was 2067 uh, 313A2 um, of the 29th of March 1915 stipulated um, basically look, it stipulated that each um, company um, was to be given uh, six trench knives and six pistols whereas originally uh, they had ten short bayonets and five pistols um, so each were given six of these um, trench knives of different variations um, I'll be doing a video of uh, German World War One knives in which I'll go a bit more into depth um, in the near future so keep an eye out for that one um, now one of these knives is marker mate, the Hugo Color one which I'll show you in a second, and this one is non-marker mate. Now, like I say, there was a lot that were 
uh, no markings at all but they were like you say mail order uh, catalogs etc which you could order like i say it was literally dozens and dozens and dozens if not maybe hundreds of different manufacturers and um, people pumping these knives out some very same famous manufacturers others so not um now this particular knife was manufactured with a five and a half inch uh, single edge blade um, which you can see this side is just a single edge okay now it was 22.8mm uh, wide at the Ricasso, at the top here, and at the thickest part of the blade there, 4.5mm uh, thick. Now the guard itself uh, is 50mm long, 16.7mm uh, roughly, let's turn that around the other way for you, 16.7mm across and 2.5mm and thick. Um, it had the the standard slab sided grips as you can see and now these were made of walnut which is a very uh, hard wood durable wood and as you can see a hundred years down the line both these knives still the wood is uh, not immaculate but it's, it's very good condition being a hard wood now it had the nine oblique grooves on it because that was the standard design all the manufacturers kept in the same had the nine grooves uh, the handle itself, uh, as you can see on this one, is held by three rivets. Um, I'll show you that both sides. You can see the three rivets. Um, now, the rivets uh, were normally sort of small to medium size. Uh, roughly measuring uh, should be around between 4 to about 4.8 mil thick. Um, is the variations I've come across. Uh, now this handle is basically 122 mil in length, um, and it's quite thick, but it it fits nicely into the hand. Now other variations are thinner, um, etc., slightly longer, slightly shorter, um, but this one 122 mil, just shy of five inch, fits nicely into the hand. Um, it's it's very basic, but a well-made knife, ideal for close to close uh, close hand to hand combat, really. Um, as good as other Great War knives? I would say probably not, um, but very efficient for the job you needed it for. Um, now, I'll, I'll just show you the scabbard on this. Now, again, the scabbard, basic, um, all very, very similar. Most scabbards were basically made the same. Um, what we have here is, is um, a magnet just inside here, which, which would have which keeps the knife in place so it doesn't slide in and out and that was just held on by a rivet now on the back here um, you've got the belt loop as you can see there now that was held on by two large rivets um, it had a clip here now unfortunately where the levers old um, I do try and use bee wax to try and um, keep my lever um, intact as, as you like um, but um, unfortunately this one has snapped off and it's missing uh, the back clip but basically that just clipped in and it holds the knife in place uh, now this was a standard scabbard made out of blue steel um, this particular one um, is six and a quarter inches long um, the knife overall is ten and a half inches long um, a very 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 nice knife like I say uh, no stampings at all um, but like not uncommon at all not uncommon whatsoever now the second knife which we're going to look at uh, was made by Hugo and Kula of Sologen um, now I'm just going to open this up for you now as you can see just have to get that in the light Hugo Collar you can see that there of Sologen and then it's got the eagle right next to that there, uh, which had the like the spread wide eagle. Just trying to get it up as close as I can, so you can see that. There you go. Okay. Now Hugo Collar of Sologen was um, in business since 1861. Uh, they were really famous for producing high uh, quality garden tools such as um, pruning shears, etc. Um, and they got brought out, um, I think it was around 1960, um, but they still made uh, things like razor blades and stuff like that, razors, etc. 
Now, this one here has another acceptance stamp on the back, which you should be able to see in that light there. There's your other acceptance stamp. Now, again, uh, this was a, a standard issue single edge blade. Okay, so you've got your, your blunt side, your sharpened side. Now, this blade here itself, you can see, I think in the light, several times it's been resharpened over the years. Uh, God knows what time the last time it was uh, sharpened. Obviously, I'd never sharpen any of my um, knives themselves because I like them being original. Now, again, if you have a look at the handle, um, it is of the hard walnut, uh, same as the other, with the nine oblique grooves down it. Now, this particular one is only held in by two rivets. Uh, you've got one there one there um, other knives had the three but this one just has the two um, again now this one here has a thicker four mil thick guard which i prefer um, it feels a lot more solid compared to the uh to the other knife now this particular one um, has a longer blade it's 150 mil uh, basically six inches uh, compared to the to the last one i showed you um, something about this knife it just feels that little bit more robust now even the handle is slightly thinner um, than the, the other example I'll just show you there uh, put them next to each other it's a slightly thinner handle um, but it, it, it does feel a lot more robust and it, it fits a little bit better into the hand um, it really is a nice uh, nice knife. Now the guard itself, like I say, is 4mm thick compared to the other one, which was only 2.5mm. And, and it's got more of a straight guard on it, uh, which is 53mm long and 19, about 9.5mm at the, the thickest edge there. Um, so a lot more robust um, knife, but like I say, all different manufacturers and uh, all done different variations of this particular knife. Um, look, what can we say about it? Look, the, 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 for something so basic it's such a well made beautiful knife you know as good as other knives for combat probably not like I say but still a, a great great knife fits into the hand lovely the way it's got the slight bulge in the handle which makes it grip deep into your hand uh, the guard protects well. A good, good all-round knife. Now the scabbard on this one, again made out of your blue steel, blued steel. Now this one's retaining a lot more of its original paint um, compared to the other one, which is uh, only probably has about five, ten percent left of the original black paint. Uh, whereas this one uh, still retains quite uh, a large amount on there. Now um, it does have held on exactly the same as most scabbards of the time so you, your magnet inside held on by that rivet so magnets do it on the outside there I can see that but uh, you won't be able to see it in this light unfortunately now again held on by two rivets now this is unfortunately broken away now because where the the levers got old and crusty and it's, it's broken away um, but basically would have been the same design as the other knife I showed you. Um, like I said, there was dozens and dozens of these manufacturers, literally dozens. Um, you can look it up. Um, you know, there's so many different manufacturers, some really well known and some um, basically uh, some I've seen that I've never heard of um, because that was what it was. It was, you know, anyone who could basically make a knife, come up with a variation and, and put it um, out for sale. Now, um, a lot of the army regiment, if these were sent off to regiments in the army, in the German army, they'd have the regiment stamp across the guard there. Um, either side, usually it was on the same side as the, as the stamping. Um, but I have seen a couple of variants or quite a few variants where the stamp's on the other side. Um, always nice to have a regimentary mark stamp on the guard because then you know it has been issued out and it, and it saw use um, whereas as you can imagine there's thousands of knives that 
you know, wouldn't have been stamped, but would have been used. And there's others that, you know, would have stuck, sat in shops and then sold years later. So such a variation. Now, we're going to go into reproductions a little bit. Now, I tried to talk a little bit about reproductions. Um, it's a sad part of uh, life, unfortunately, with regards to anything that's um, old and collectible because there's a market out there people will do reproductions now for example the most common type of these knives uh, which i've seen out there which have been reproduced um, are called a uh, manufactured by a company called uh, very common they're called the gottlieb uh, hammersfer in solid and fock now <laughs> being the most copied doesn't mean they aren't copied well now there was a load come out in the last say 20 years uh, from india and pakistan which if you put them next to each other you'd look at them and you'd go i can't work out which one's fake and which one's not the the only thing really that gives it away um is the copies are stamped um deeper than the originals and the the b on the gottlieb uh, looks more like a g than a b um but it's like you say you look at them and they're so well made so well made um and to the to the poor novice collector who's out there collecting and um sees one of these knives and wouldn't know to look out for these and they buy them so what happens is people keep buying them so of course then it generates the the need to keep producing more and then more and more get flooded into the market unfortunately and then i'd probably say there's probably a thousand copies for every one original now um, and every military affair i go to i keep seeing the same knives for the last 15 20 years um, unfortunately still out there and people still purchasing them um, you know even with the, the, the frogs themselves um, especially now some of them they're 20 years old so you know the, the frog itself the belt loop etc now the lever's 20 or 20 plus years old um, let alone it being people dry them and age them they are actually getting aged to them now so they're very hard to uh, notice any difference and it is a real shame unfortunately um, but it's like with anything you're going to purchase do the research first there's plenty of forums out there plenty of books um there's a lot out there to uh, let you know before you go out there and actually purchase a knife to make sure you're looking out for the right things you know even you know the most die-hard collector um i'm sure if they were honest would put their hands up and go you know they've they've, they've brought something over time that maybe isn't quite right or something's not right about it um, and unfortunately that's uh, in anything in life you know if there's a demand for something then people will make copies and unfortunately like i say india and pakistan do seem to produce a lot of good copies um, eastern europe um, there has been a lot of copies coming out of eastern europe but normally you, you know the telltale signs are there and you and you you do notice the difference but the ones out of india and pakistan they do do them very well a lot of the time they do bury them in the ground leave them there and yeah let them rot out a bit and and then bring them into the market a couple of years later or a few months later even the scabbards themselves um the originals are quite square um, but a lot of the copies have got a point on them um, so that's a good thing to look out to however there was a couple of manufacturers who'd done a more pointy scabbard rather than a squared version so it's not 100 percent certain that if you're buying a knife and you go oh no that's got a pointy scabbard that's a fake it doesn't mean it is you might just have one of the very rare variations um, but however i would say 99.9 percent .9 of the copies out there um or oh, sorry the ones with the pointed scabbard would be a um a copy um same with um a lot of scabbards uh, look more like a more like a whitey metal i'd say rather than um the standard um original um so always look and look at originals and and have a look at them have a feel for them if you can um and then then you can notice the the, the subtle differences so always try and do that um so look 
There's uh, two variations of this uh, nine groove slab handle knife, standard issue German knife. I thought I'd show you. Uh, please check out my channel for other Great War knives of uh, various countries. I try and do a new video every month if I can. Um, so please like and subscribe, um, and then uh, you'll um, be let known when the next video comes up. Um, I'd like to say a big thank you for watching, and until next time, take care. Thank you.